Thank you. Yeah. I had to get up here. Yeah. Got something to sell? No, no. <laughs> no coffee. <laughs> no, I started listening to, to your uh, tapes and, and stuff on the internet about a couple months ago. Well, back around Thanksgiving. And uh, I started, I really am, am liked what you got, to, your, your, the law of attraction and everything. And so on January the 10th, I said, well, I'm going to put this thing to the test because I, I, on some of your uh, things you said, it's just as easy to manifest a, uh, a button as it is to manifest a, a castle. Actually, the other way around, but we get your point. All right. <laughs> but uh, so I, uh, I said, okay, on January the 10th, I'm going to manifest a button. I mean, I'm a, I'm a single man. I don't have any sewing stuff. Everything I got snaps, you know, so I mean, I'm like, <laughs> I, I, I'm going to put this thing to the test. So. I gave it to my inner being, my higher power and everything. And, uh, of course, you know, next day I said, I'm going to go down to Walmart and buy a button. But, I mean, <laughs> but I didn't do that. I didn't do that. So I said, I, I'm going to do this. And I, I let it go. And I've been trying to get my, you know, what do you call it, the receiving mode. Well, on February the 7th, I uh, was putting my dogs in the truck and, uh, they had, had muddy feet on them and everything. I picked up the rag and everything and uh, was wiping their feet off to get in the truck and this button fell out. <laughs> this button fell out into the floorboard of my truck and I know it was not in my truck. So I, I had a, like a freak out moment. <laughs> you know, I mean, because I, <laughs> it, it was pretty strange. I mean, it, I was having an emotional meltdown there beside the truck. And, uh, <laughs> You know, I remember on one of your tapes, you said that, you know, back in the old days, you had a, a nav system that was Magellan nav system. And you know what this button says on it? Magellan. So for about three or four days there, I was, uh, I was riding on Clyde, cloud nine. I said, I'm going to manifest a million dollars now. <laughs> so, I mean, so I was riding on cloud nine and, uh, and I was telling my ex-girlfriend about what happened. She was all excited too. But then when I told her, it said Magellan on it. She, she said, I have a pair of shorts that's Magellan, and the button came off a pair of shorts. So I want to ask you, did I manifest this button, or is it just like a coincidence that it fell off a pair of shorts that I had? Well, most important, yes, you manifested the button. You're going to really enjoy this conversation. So by manifest, does that mean it materialized out of thin air? No. By manifest, does it mean that it came into my experience and I was tuned to it because of my desire and most important, absence of resistance. And in that combination of desire, because I had identified it was something that I wanted and I was looking for, and I wanted it to come not in a traditional way. As you said, I could have gone down and just purchased a button, but I wanted the universe to deliver it to me in some meaningful way, and it did. But then, when you begin applying logic and you try to talk yourself out of it, then that can sort of undo some of the fun that happens. We have two manifestation stories that we want to give to you while there are endless ones that you could tell to each other. But these are significant. We were visiting with a woman on the telephone one day years ago when Esther was still doing telephone consultations. And she wasn't having any of us. She wanted a fortune telling and she wanted it to be good. She wanted us to create in her reality. She didn't want to learn how to be her own deliberate creator. So we thought we would help her to understand the association between a thought being activated and what comes next, cause and effect. While we weren't using those words, just started using those words today. So. We said to her, let's talk for a little bit about blue glass. Well, she was very irritated by that. She didn't have any interest in any blue glass, but we talked about blue glass for just over a minute. And then we said, now we would like to talk about butterflies. Also annoying to her, but we stuck with it for just over a minute. Then we said, we would like to talk to you about feathers. And we were doing descriptive things, talking about where they come from, how large they are, what colors they are. And finally, she had all of us that she could take, and she was happy to leave the conversation. And Esther had been the only one in the room. Jerry was not listening to the conversation. They were in California. 
in San Diego in La Jolla they went to George's for lunch they parked their car down the street from George's and got out of the car and began to walk and Esther felt this urgency a very strong compulsion to go into a shop now that in and of itself is not unusual <laughs> and dragging Jerry into it isn't either but Esther meant to be in there for no reason except she just couldn't not and when they got inside deep 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 into the back of the shop there was a wall of blue glass wall to wall ceiling to floor every color and texture and depth of blue well blue wasn't something they were looking for they weren't looking for anything Esther didn't even make the association between the consultation and what she was seeing Jerry said I'm hungry let's go eat so they went on to George's they had a lunch about an hour long and then they walked from George's down to the Cove which is such a beautiful place and as they were walking across this big apron of grass a flurry of butterflies so intense that for a while they couldn't talk because they would eat butterflies so they just waited for it to lift off of them Esther is still not making any association and then Jerry said look at that little boy he looks like he knows you and he was running toward Esther and handed her a feather he would picked up a pigeon's feather and felt inspired because he's pure positive energy to be the fairy of the universe that the universe was using to deliver to Esther the meaningful context of all of this stuff there are fairies of the universe everywhere we call them fairies of the universe which bothers a lot of people we call them cooperative components which is equally descriptive and so within two hours of activating in Esther's vibration and this woman's vibration the universe demonstrated to Esther how fast it can deliver a subject that holds no resistance none of those subjects mattered to Esther and so all of them were easily deliverable everything that you want that doesn't hold resistance is easily deliverable buttons are an easier delivery than a million dollars but they don't need to be so then because that story is so meaningful one day Esther and a handful of friends were frolicking together in San Diego area and Esther said let's play a game let's make a list of 20 or 30 things that we don't feel resistance about and then let's just move through this day with nothing in mind other than letting the universe deliver to us these things so different ones of them contributed different things Esther put purple chairs because that's a meaningful thing to her and someone said a CTSV it was a new Cadillac that you hardly could ever find one and somebody else said a Volkswagen van one of those really beachy ones that's got wood siding and the surfboard on the top and Esther thought that one will be easy it's the only thing on the list that they didn't find that day they were at the beach in San Diego and she thought that would be really easy but she thought thinking about it being easy felt like cheating and so it couldn't come is sort of getting the drift of this she did too much thinking about it and kept it away nearly everything on the list came to them that day which demonstrated to them that all you have to do is ask it's not a miracle it's not metaphysical in the sense that it's something freakishly outside the norms of what can happen to you all it is is a vibrational awareness that allows you to follow the paths that your inner being is defining to lead you to what you want because what you want is abundantly around you it always has been abundantly around you but you've been blind to it because negative thoughts keep you from seeing it where when the negative thoughts are no longer active in your vibration the veil so to speak is lifted and you have access to things that you did not have access to before someone wrote a book Esther cannot recall what the title of the book was but someone had written a foreword it was a book on prosperity and in the foreword the writer was talking about if you are seeking abundance 
if your vibration is clear that abundance will start showing up maybe in the form of pennies and Jerry and Esther had had enough experience with things just showing up and so Jerry said well this will be fun pennies will begin showing up in our experience and sure enough everywhere they went there was a penny then another penny then another penny reach into a pocket that you knew didn't have a penny and there would be a penny pennies pennies everywhere pennies pennies in weird places pennies 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 it was just really fun common pennies are common but really really fun never had they had so much experience with pennies it was otherworldly pennies everywhere then they got on an airplane this was about a three-day penny escapade they got on an airplane they were sitting in first class on the bulkhead and as the plane took off Esther looked down and could not believe what she saw two pennies on the floor stood on their edges because of the inertia of the airplane as it took off and Esther said I'm so glad you are here to see this because no one would ever believe it and Jerry said let's promise each other we will never tell the story <laughs> because no one will ever believe it whatever you want is coming to you say it better whatever is active in your vibration is coming to you the question is what's active in your vibration what you want or what you don't want what's dominant within you desire or belief about what is you can have it all but you have the responsibility of focusing it into being and so it doesn't matter what it is Esther her Utah house that we were talking about it is a castle it has turrets and everything and in one of the turrets there's a painting of a castle <laughs> and when Esther found the house she knew that it had just been sitting there waiting for her she could not buy it it was a castle she had to buy it it was a castle and she had enough pennies to buy it <laughs> enough I choose to, to think I manifested it so you did no question about it no question about it you choose to believe that it came out of thin air no I know it. we're asking this it's all right if you choose to believe that because things can it's a sophisticated focus that allows that to happen but thoughts are turning to things and the amount of time that it takes for vibrations to turn to thoughts and thoughts to turn to impulses and impulses to turn to urges and urges to turn to rendezvous and rendezvous to turn to things it does not matter what you're asking for it does not matter what is active in your vibration nothing is off limits if you can dream it it will be and dreaming is the key here because in dreaming you're out ahead of it we didn't say if you can wrestle it to the ground and kill it it will be <laughs> oh stuff like that bees too but it's mediocre in comparison wouldn't you rather have a button just show up in some weird way like that and don't let your ex-girlfriend she's an ex for a reason <laughs> Anybody talk you out of believing in your button believe in your button the universe delivered it to you but it delivered it to you through the path of least resistance so does that bother you oh don't bring it to me through the path of least resistance that's not magic enough there's a story Esther read it of a young couple in a boat and they're newly in love and he's given her a beautiful ring and she's dangling her hand in the water and her ring comes off and years later he is fishing and he catches a fish and when he cleans it the ring is inside your ability to believe that story is important so many say yes yeah, somebody just made that up somebody just made that story up to make us believe in things that are not possible but the law of attraction could send a fish to get that ring and inspire you to be in the boat the day the fish is hungry the law of attraction could put that kind of timing together things like that happen all the time well, thank you I appreciate it yeah